Hello, everybody. It's Don Littlefield, general manager of the Main Brew Bus. I'm your tour guide today for our uh, four o'clock uh, appointment, I guess I'll say, with the folks at Funky Bow Beer Company in Lyman, Maine. Uh, today is the second day that we are running virtual brewery tours, and this is an opportunity for us to, uh, to work uh, in a different way with our partners, with the brewers from around the state that are uh, continuing to make beer, even though they are limited with the ways that they can get the beer out. To and to find out a little bit more about what's happening behind the scenes these days. So uh, Paul and Abraham Lorraine from Funky yeah. Bo will be joining us right now. There's Abraham right now. There's Paul right there. Hello, boys. How are you? Hey guys, how are you? Good. Yeah. Cheers. Good to see you. I haven't seen you guys for a, for a while. What are you uh, What are you drinking in your glass? Uh, Citra IPA. Citra IPA. You're 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 kidding, right? Uh, I mean, that's what I'm enjoying in my glass as well. Did you find that in Hannaford? Uh, this was brought to me. So um, I'm not sure. Uh, my buddy Zach from the Main Brew Bus delivered this to me yesterday. I'm in. Um, uh, quarantine after uh, traveling to Ireland, so in an, uh, not going out for any extra activities. So uh, uh, he sources, us, I think, at a local uh, beer retail store, brought it to me. So uh, but, yeah, so let's offer a cheers to to Funky Bo. Cheers! All right, clink. I heard it. There it is. Clink. There it is. Well, that's nice. I haven't. I think I've had this once before. But uh, is, is it just Citra? Yeah, that was just Citra. Uh, one of the new batches, I started adding a little mosaic. Just get a little extra punch, but that one's 16s or just Citra. Oh, we have 12 yeah. coming out as well. Um, and to Hannaford's. That's why he was asking if you got it at Hannaford's. I told everybody. Uh, he said Hannaford's. Just to, Hannaford's. Hannaford's. <laughs> just to be sure. Uh, cool. So I appreciate you guys doing this. Where you, uh, you, you pretty much were already going to be on the... Uh, on the property today, anyway, I imagine. Correct. Yeah. 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 Business is brisk. Yeah, that's what I figure. We'll we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, let's start by for uh, for those who have not had the opportunity to visit the uh, the the only uh, brewery in Lyman, Maine, and who do not know your backstory. It's quite fascinating. So, if you wouldn't mind sharing the backstory of how you got to where you're at now. Wow. Where in the hell are we? We're in the long hours. <laughs> Yeah, and the long, the, the the short of the long of it is like fathers and sons do. Sometimes we didn't talk for a while, and when we got back together, we shared our love of beer and making it, and uh, okay. we didn't plan on this. That's the shortest version of that I've ever heard. We should have been locked up for the business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fill in some blanks here. So, uh, Paul, you've had a successful uh, organic, uh, um, uh, basically salad greens business that uh, was thriving. You had connections with a lot of great restaurants all around Southern Maine. True? Land landscaping and winter greens. Like yeah. Thing. Winter greens are more interesting to me, but landscaping for sure. We'll give you that. And then, Abraham, you were, uh, you were in uh, college. You were uh, progressing towards uh, a particular career field. What were you heading towards? I was uh, I was uh, pre medical, and then I was microbiology, biochemistry, organic chemistry. Yeah, so, and uh, then uh, in an effort to get back to get in an effort to get back together, a uh, homebrew kit was procured and given to you, and uh, it helped to uh, to connect some bonds that had been broken for a little bit. Right. We, yeah. Seven we, years. We uh, I found that beer kit over at the main brew shop. Yep. And to this day, we could never remember his name when we left with the grain. And we'd always okay. say, okay, we couldn't remember his name. And At Maine Brewing Supply? Yeah. What? Robert Zimmerman. We call him Jimmy Crack. Yeah, Rob, yeah, we called him Jimmy Crack Corn for years. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's easy. You just have to remember that's that's uh, the birth name for Bob Dylan, Robert Zimmerman. So We like that's Jimmy true. Crack Corn. Jimmy Crack Corn works for me. All right. So, when did you open uh, Funky Bow originally in just the little uh, the little garage section there? Two thousand thirteen. Uh, 13. March thirteenth. Great loss. Oh. Of invoice number one. <laughs> so you just uh, just crossed over that anniversary date. We did. We had uh, yeah. actually actually Dawn, We uh, it was the last day we were open. 
Interesting. We squeezed it in. We it, it was a four hour discussion. Do we open this weekend or not? And yeah. It was it was a big deal. It is. A yeah. Big deal. It is a big deal, and I, you know, uh, you're not one to shy away from a party. So an anniversary party is is definitely part of uh, it, part of that. But it's also, you know, you're a destination that that does draw crowds of people. So I imagine you had to balance that out as well. Well, people uh, people come up to feed the horses. They bring carrots and apples, and then they walk around the trails in the woods, and they'll order a pizza and either set out in the woods and eat it and drink a beer or. Uh, you know, because they we we're not pouring any beer. We just uh, do six packs, so they can do what they want once they leave with it. <laughs> no, no, que- no and questions people, asked. There. It's really nice. People showed up at ten thirty this morning, and we really? don't the one, and they just wanted to get out. They were stir crazy. They said. Yeah, well, it's it's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Is uh, you know, yesterday uh, morning, Paul, you put out a a post. I saw it on Facebook, and uh, you know, the first lines were something along the lines of, uh, you know, normally when I when I do this, which I don't do a lot anymore, I'm going to rant and rave about something uh, that's that's very near and dear to my heart. And I was like, oh God, here we go. What's he going to say? That's By the end of it, yeah, all right. By the end of it, you were paying tribute to your. Uh, to your supporters, to your fans, the local residents, and your staff. And I thought it was really well said. And one of the things you did point out in there is that you do have, uh, I think it's 25 acres where people can walk around. There's plenty of, of open space. If they just need to get away, they can do that. If they just want to get a pizza, they can do that. If they don't want to, you know, if they if they just want to look at the horses, they just bring carrots and apples. Apparently those are in short supply as well because you're appealing for your guests to bring uh, carrots and apples. But, uh, you know, if you just need a break from all of this, uh, come, come to Lyman come to the farm and, and just get some fresh air. I, I thought that was really well well put. If, if, if him and I get a, it's a feel-good thing to know that people can come up here, and even if they're not buying a pizza or beer, you know, there's it's almost like a mini little park. I never looked at it like that, but people are finding refuge here. It's amazing. The world is, like, we're doing this visual, visual tour with you. The world is changing. Yeah. And it might go back to a little bit of normal, but the world has changed now. Yeah. Well, let's talk. We don't know, right? Yeah. No, we just got to be ready. Let's talk about that, Paul, for a second. Um, I know because it was made public to me. You just celebrated your 70th birthday. Um, I know because you are a proud veteran that you served in Vietnam on behalf of our country. And so you've seen a lot of things over the years. Um, Did you ever see, uh, you know, a place that we're at now where people were basically asked to just stay home? No, no. Uh, well, you got to discount the army. We were asked to stay home all the time. You would have, <laughs> no, you would have preferred to stay home, but. Get your ass in the bunker. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's it's like a movie. It's like you watch on TV. Yeah. Never seen that in my life. Yeah. Um, let's talk, uh, Abraham, let's talk about, um, you know, how this worked for you guys. Um, you had your, you know, you had your, your anniversary, but you had already at that point started to figure out that you probably shouldn't or wouldn't be able to stay open. So what was that thought process as you guys, uh, were able to figure all that out? I think, (laughs) well, first we were, there was no, the problem I had personally was that there was no direction from the main government so it was basically just like watch watch yourself you know i mean st- this is the guidelines from the federal government and we're gonna want you guys to not be in groups of more than i think it started with 50 and then went to 10 but there was nothing there was no closures and, or anything like that there was no there was no direction from our from our governor so it was tough for people i think they were trying to figure it out like should we be good to our community and just shut down so we're not spreading this? Or should we stay open because people don't want to just go home? So mm. it was like a balance, you know, back and forth. And we played it really safe, like I think everyone else did. We did sanitizer. We did one-use plastic cups. We made sure that uh, we were really careful with the bathrooms and cleaning and, you know, everything like that. And just decided for that first weekend to, to do what we do, but on a really, like, cautious level. And then... Yeah she had announced that everyone has to close unfortunately then you like immediately move to take out like take out delivery whatever you can to stay viable yeah 
I mean, it's still it's still a moving target, obviously. But uh, but Abe, did you have any particular um, insight based on in your education and schooling that it was able uh, that enabled you to kind of see uh, the writing on the wall? Um, I, I just kind of curious. You know, microbiology. You yeah. kind of understand the stuff more than the average bear. You know, unfortunately, when you go through all that schooling, you have like this this knowledge that uh, can kind of it starts to creep you out a little because you know a lot about the virus and the bacteria and everything and how they spread and that's kind of like something i was talking to my dad they said you know this isn't just something that just comes and goes you know this is really going to last a while until we get under control and uh so he was it was funny because it was kind of like he was advising me on what the procedures are going to be in the tap room as far as pizza to go and beer and all this stuff and i was advising him procedures would be for sanitation <laughs> uh, you know, um, teamwork just, you know viruses all you know we were, we were going back and forth back and forth and it was yeah uh, really interesting it was a good it was a good combination yeah, yeah. There, there was an opportunity here for us to take what we have and and turn it into something that's viable yeah. in this down situation you know the land the yeah. place, we have really really good pizza and that we have beer and that the brewery itself can sustain itself. Yeah, right. And the tap room is for our, our employees. We could have just closed the tap room, but that would have put a number of people out of work and that was painful. And we said, okay, what can we do in the tap room to keep you guys busy and not have to lay you off? And uh, we came up with this system and Emily, our tap room manager, has been killing it all week, and we've never delivered a thing ever. I know. Right? <laughs> hey, hi, this is Emily with a bag of cheese. Uh, no, you hi, Emily with a bag of cheese. It's good to see you. Um, yes, I see you. There you go. Uh, ah, better. Yes, perfect. Uh, thanks, thank, thanks for doing what you're doing, and thanks for uh, for helping this uh, this engine move forward. It's yeah, it's great. It's great. She's gonna put the cheese away. <laughs> and probably a couple pallets of beer went out the back and side door of the tap room. Yeah. Delivered a pizza. We were all over the place. Uh, Sam, we were in Springvale, Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk for Sarko, Benefit, Limington. And she organized the whole thing and it came off without a hitch. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, so those pivots, uh, perhaps a little easier you know, to pivot in on on your property, but then to send your staff out and delivery, um, you know, it's uh, it's got to be rewarding that that actually works. That Emily was able to to make that all happen, and I'm sure you're hearing from your from your customers saying, "Oh my God, this is amazing! I get to have your pizza." Uh, I don't, don't need anything but send this. Yeah, we yeah. Have delivered ourselves, actually. Yeah, him and I were out on the road. Some people. Well, I was worried you might be doing it right now. So knocked on the door. It had no window on the door, so they couldn't see who was there, and they opened it up, and they were like, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there they are. You could have done better, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And, well, and, and the fact that the brewery's just able to take care of itself, one of the big reasons is that we went with Pine State, and they really pushed us to cans, and we didn't want them because it was so damn expensive. And yeah, I remember those days. And it was like 80% of our business, 85% of our business. So now that there's no cakes going out the door, we're actually ramping up because of our distribution. Well, let's talk about that. You, uh, through your relationship with uh, your distributor, you were able to get placed in a lot of retail uh, locations. And I imagine that those retail locations, by and large, are still open. So how is that? Except for Target. Except for Target, okay. Walmart, so how it? Shaw's, Walgreens, Big Apple, all of them. Yep. So how do you think that strategy has really helped you at this time? If you were, uh, if you were predominantly a, a keg and draft system business, you wouldn't be able to uh, to be as nimble as you are now. It'd be a different business model. You know, it's we all go through this, no matter what you're producing. I remember the the milk people went through it, and they figured out how to milk cheese. Mm -hmm. When nobody was buying milk, and uh, you know, people, people, the best, the best comes out in people at these times. You know, yeah, it, it just... that's for sure. Uh, we're talking with Paul and Abraham Lorraine. They are the uh, founders of Funky Bow Beer Company, which is in Lyman, Maine. 
at one point was uh, basically the only commercial enterprise in Lyman. That may still be the truth. I'm Don Littlefield. I'm your tour guide today on our virtual brewery tour for the main brew bus. Uh, we're taking your questions and comments. So down at the very bottom of your screen where you see comments, you can either send us a question, a comment, and I think you can even send some hearts and love if you like what we're uh, what they're saying and what we're what you're hearing. So, uh, boys, we got a couple of comments here. Uh, Click and Cherry said uh after you had talked about the uh the changes you made very quickly they said good on you for that with a thumbs up to make those changes to keep your uh to your guests and your staff safe uh bill jr says g-string and pizza so good uh agreed g-string is one of the beers that is produced by funky bow uh and blank canvas brewery who we'll be talking to at the five o'clock hour says cheers from brewer cheers hey cheers here's steven yeah good luck so <laughs> good luck with talking to me or just good luck in general to the brewer okay very good <clears throat> so one thing that's <laughs> one thing that's been consistent is uh you know breweries are not shut down they are uh you know some of the things that they're doing after beer is uh, finished is different but beer still has to be produced so uh, abraham can you talk a little bit about uh, what's been happening in production in the brewery the past week and and what you're looking forward on the schedule to do this coming week well we're uh we're kind of waiting for our distributor to distributors in other states to kind of give us the, you know, there's like a week or two lag because when this all happened, they didn't know what the sure. they're going to be. So we're kind of waiting for a Monday to figure out our game plan as far as what has been defeated and how much more we have to make. We were already ramping up for spring and summer at this point, but it could be more definitely less kegs. And we had, you know, 20 barrels tanks that were going to be do just kegs for restaurants that were opening in the spring, and that's kind of put on the back burner. So now we're doing ordering cans, specialty beers, new beers, and just trying to um, change the schedule pretty much daily. Maybe, maybe even weekly, depending on how this goes. For sure. Uh, a couple of things that, you know, this is the fifth one we've done. And so talking to a couple of other brewers, uh, we're hearing a little bit of a pivot towards loggers. So is there any effort by uh, Funky Bow to move more into the lager realm? Well, you know, we don't have the space right now because um, we're a little behind schedule with some of our out-of-state shipments. So that's actually going to take up some time over the next month or so to get those ramped up and shipped out. So actually... We don't have to switch over to loggers right now just because of the demand for ales. So we're okay. just going to continue with that. I cold that boy. Yeah, so we were going to do a whole thing of, hey, you, Yo. cut out, you cut out for a minute. Hey. Are you there? I'm right here. I'm right here. We're, we're going to just keep business as usual uh, uh, at this point. So. Okay. The other thing we heard and just talking to uh, John and Tina Bonney at Foundation is that they, you know, had planned in their schedule for a certain percentage of, uh, of keg versus can, and then they realized that they were going to run short of labels. So are labels a concern for you at all with some of the, the shift to towards canning? No, because we don't use labels. All our cans, so G-String so far, printed on this, uh, the they're shrink wrap. Okay. We have those all right. already, so we've, they've been checking in with us. Every week to be like, are you still taking these? You're still taking these? I'm like, yeah, bring them. <laughs> the, the answer is yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, seems like you're in the brewery space. And are you able to show uh, everybody viewing around just a little bit right around there? All right. Whoa, here we go. All right, you want to tell them both? So let's see. Sorry. It's <laughs> so this is. This is the old brewery, and it's. I know it looks like, what the heck? How could that be a brewery? Because it's. It's amazing. Yeah. Piled full of stuff. So we have our our mill here. You'd walk in. I mean, this is just piled full of grain right now for this week. But, um, this was an old garage. Is an old garage. And back here is so there's a canning line that we pull out everything's like put together in pieces around here because it's so small in the brewery i feel like it's like a lego set um, and for those for those who've not been there that was exclusively the brewery so he just crossed yeah. over into the, what's called the new building i guess uh yeah, although so it's a little older you, now if you come way over here to this big bay door and you like turn around so like here is the new brewery where my dad yeah is. 
and the tanks that went in to the left over there, the 60s, and there's some 20s. And then there's the Funkalosophy. Funkalosophy. So what are the highlights of Funkalosophy? Aspire to improve our skills. Be clean, work clean, take our work seriously. Be passionate. Uh, bring in good vibes. That's in an alternate color. Make and then make the, the, I, make, can. make the best beer we can. I love it. Intended. I got it. And then just uh, kind of boil kettle. Never had to do this before. It's interesting. Boil kettle. <laughs> Ash time. My dad. <laughs> he came with the brewery. Amazing. Um, and then it's his like, land, you know. What's that? <laughs> it's his land. Yeah, right. I know. He can kick me off anytime he wants. Did you, uh, did you want to get into the tap room at all? Yeah, is it open? Let's go. All right. So while we're walking over there, let me tell uh, people a quick story. So <clears throat> we ran a tour uh, now probably about three years ago called the, uh, the Barrel and... Uh, Farm and Barrel Tour, and we brought an author by the name of Josh Bernstein up there, and uh, when he got into this particular space, he looked at me and he says, what the F have you gotten me into? Because what you're looking at is a greenhouse, and the greenhouse is actually the tasting room in winter. In summer, obviously, people can spread out to, uh, to different places, but in this greenhouse, you've got kind of an entry area here where you buy your uh, your tokens, you can buy beer to go. And then as you continue to walk, and we're walking, and we might lose uh -oh. the signal. We might have gone too far away. Walk backwards. <laughs> uh, as you walk into that space, uh, <clears throat> if it's frozen on your end, uh, no, we're back. No, we're there. So this is a, a literal greenhouse. So remember the uh, the landscaping and organic green side of the the, the family history. Um, they have the skills to build greenhouses, and uh, this is literally where you would uh, be in on a Sunday afternoon. You'd be able to sit around. You'd be able to congregate. There'll be live music over there on the stage. You'd have a bunch of dogs around with no leashes because leashes are forbidden here. So you get a really fun family atmosphere in this fireplace, which is new this year with uh, the mantle above that, which is uh, rough hewn wood, and, and just like this amazing environment. And not to mention, there's wood-fired pizza, and there is a full, uh, you know, there's a bar to buy to buy beer, and there's all of these great environmental factors there. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hola. Hola. Thanks for being here. So this is really the lifeblood of... Uh, you know, oh, look at that. There's a good looking pizza there. And 10% of that grain uh, of the dough is made from spent grain, which is uh, fantastic as well. So, <clears throat> eggs of the people. Exactly. So, this uh, tasting room is the lifeblood of uh, the on premise side of what Funky Bo is all about. Going back to Josh Bernstein, after he recovered from uh, the shock of being in this space, he wrote a very nice article uh, profiling Paul and Abraham and their story. And talking about what their uh, what their brewery is all about here, tucked in Lyman, Maine. So, uh, might as well get a beer while you're here, I guess, boys, because you because <laughs> you can't do anything else. There you go. Flip it back. Perfect. Perfect. So, it seems like we've still got a good signal here. So, uh, seeing this dark and quiet on a Sunday afternoon, what does that uh, do to you guys? How do how do you feel about that? It's we've been, eerie. We've been so busy today, though. It's just starting to mellow off. It's been a good delivery and takeout, though. The, 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 we're, and we're so thankful that the community is supporting small businesses like they are. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. I, I've never yeah. seen such a thing with people sharing each other's businesses, sharing each other's special boards and menus and just trying to stay alive and get through it. So it's really cool. Yeah. We, uh, gotta, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Uh, I was just going to give you a few more uh, props here. Surfer Girl 171717 says, I've been there on a brew bus tour and loved it. Codeman 120A says, Funky Bo is the best. You're all amazing people. And uh, uh, our friend Cat. What's. When you say we're amazing no. people, was that you or them? No, that's you guys. You are amazing people. Yeah, Funky Bo is the best. Those people are saying that. No, these are the people saying it. Uh, Codeman 120A says, Funky Bo is the best. You are all amazing people. And then uh, KB Fuhrer, which is Kathy Fuhrer, somebody we know, says their pizza is so luscious and the beer is so tasty. Wow. I love it. I love it.
Where would we so be tell- with our, our customers and our, his two of our regulars right here? They'd like to say hello. Hello. Let's talk to them. Hi, there. Hi guys. How are you doing? Good, you're here uh, for pickup for pizza? Definitely, and beer. Beautiful. What does uh, Funky Bo mean to you, and what does it mean to the community? Oh my gosh, it means a lot. This is a place to come, meet friends, um, gather with all our now regular friends. We've got great staff, we love love them. So. That's great. Do you live in Lyman, or do you travel for some distance to go there? Uh, we just live the next town over in Kennebunk. Kennebunk. But still, it's uh, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get there? About 10, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, great. Well, thanks for your support of Funky Bo. I'm Don from the Main Brew Bus, and we're telling, uh, by the time this is all over, a few hundred people about what's happening at Funky Bo. So thanks for showing that you can still <laughs> come over there and pick up pizza and take it home and not have to worry about cooking tonight. So Definitely. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, Paul and Abraham, let's talk about what is uh, what is what are the business hours and what are are there any special procedures that people need to know about when they come to visit you? Special procedures. Uh, we are going to sit down on uh, Monday and figure out what happened this weekend. Okay. The, we're, we're planning, I think, on opening on Wednesday, Thursday, which is different for us. We're usually weekends, but we're going to have three or four hours on each of those days where we deliver pizza and beer and then go back to our weekend stuff, which is uh, Friday, one to seven, something like that, one to eight. Uh, And Saturday, same thing. And Sunday, one to four, one to four thirty. It's, this is new stuff and we've got to do the best we can to get through it and try to figure out how best to do it. And Emily's got a grip on that. Talk about it. Emily's got that. Yeah. It seems like she's got that uh, starting to be figured out, but what you're also saying is the community perhaps demands uh, to have some options. And so that Wednesday, where normally you wouldn't be open, Thursday you wouldn't be open, uh, you know, why not? Well, uh, give them an option to, to get out there. Do you, do you plan any additional offerings uh, uh, above the pizza, I guess is what I'm asking? We, we, we talked about that briefly, and we could easily offer a salad. But I don't know what else we would do. We have a very limited kitchen. It's just a wood-fired oven. Yeah, with a couple of proof ovens and a warming oven, a bunch of refrigerators. And so we're, you know, Don, we tried different things. Abraham and I tried the ribs and the brisket, and we tried nachos and chicken wings. But people come in for the pizza and the beer. Yeah. And and we were doing this sweet pizza thing. You remember the old days? We I do, fondly. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, we, we went back to that two months ago, and we quadrupled our attendance on Sundays. It's free pizza Sunday. And it's my favorite day of the week. I mean, I love being here and giving the pizza away like the old days. And uh, it's hurting me. It hurts my feelings. We can't do it now. It's just no. Yeah. But, you know, without planning it, perhaps you just planted the seed in people that, you know, Sunday is pizza day. It is for me. I totally always want to have pizza on Sunday. So now instead of getting it for free there at the farm, they are perhaps buying it for uh, for takeout or delivery, and that's okay too. And yeah, we we had a great Sunday. We had a, a really great Saturday, a phenomenal Friday, and it's more than Abraham and I thought would happen. Mm, These people awesome. this week, everything is today. We don't know about tomorrow, but I know today. <laughs> that's true. Tonight, Abraham and I can go to sleep and know that our people had a job and feel damn good. And yeah, that's. The- that says a lot, and that's, uh, I think, the, kind of the, the crux of the whole thing is that uh, your staff is employed, uh, you're still able to serve your community in a different way, and you're, yeah. you're able to do that, you know. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, a couple of other comments here. I see our friend, uh, uh, let's see, Tim Bissell says hello with a wave. So Tim <laughs> Bissell. Tim, 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 Tim. Yep. Uh, Shane from Central Distributor says, I love these guys. I'll be getting some pizza for sure this week, which is great. And, um, and so let's, let's talk about, um, let's talk about how you guys are doing. Uh, you're, you, your families, you know, Abraham, you're fairly newly married. Like, how are you guys doing emotionally and, uh, you know, with all of these changes of life? We're going nuts, Don. We're going nuts. No. <laughs> um, we're... I don't, I, you know, I, we're doing fine. I mean, you know, we're just getting through this and seeing what's going to happen. 
on the other end. You know, there's not much else you can do. I do know that I have been. Uh, my wife uh, is getting her yo. She works up at Bowdoin, so they've obviously closed. Um, so yeah. she's working from home, but she's also getting her yoga certification. But they've closed the yoga studio, so that's tough. Um, so we've been doing a lot of like walking at home and yoga and different things to maybe not watching the news every hour, that kind yeah. of. Um, and just focusing, like I'll come in here and do. I have to work in the brewery. He has to work in the tap room still. So just kind of life as usual except for the amount of people that usually come up you know it's it's kind of eerie when you walk in the tap room and there's like two people there you know it's just yeah just a weird weird thing but um we're so lucky we have people supporting us yeah without them we, with the tap room wouldn't be open yeah. yeah paul you're uh you're a tough guy but uh how are you doing with all this i'm better at hiding it you know this isn't my my first big show, but tough, nothing like this. Guy. I'm an old bird. Are you a tough guy? I've been around the block. He's a, he's a, a tough guy. Tough this guy. one, he's a tough guy. You know, the guy's a tough guy. Alice and I spend that time, like, I spend a lot of my time figuring out who to give shit to. And, okay. you know, the different charities, the ones that are dear to our hearts, anything to do with animals, kids, stuff like oh, that. I thought you meant give shit to, like, you know, <laughs> That's what I thought, too, Abe. <laughs> give me, like, push shit. <laughs> bullshit yeah kind of <laughs> but you mean you mean like uh donations and you mean uh you know how to clarify that how to help but out once you get halfway up the ladder you're inundated i'm sure all the other breweries know that so you need a, a person that's generic to talking to the different people that want this or that and we don't say no too much we just yeah. keep track of who it's going to and when and it's a fun job uh i know the thing with the hospital was off the cuff we just had some extra doughs we needed to use now. We made 25 pizzas, took them down to Southern Main Men. Geez, you thought we were air dropping in uh, ammunition. <laughs> they really appreciated it, huh? Oh, beyond appreciated. They were, they, and yeah. Emily went above and beyond the Call of Duty. On each box, she wrote a little note. We love you guys. We so appreciate you guys. A little handwritten note on each box. I didn't know that until I saw a post from the hospital. So just stuff like that, and it, it makes you feel good to be able to help out. So as much as you're feeling bad, if you can contribute, it helps out a lot. And we're finding ourselves, all of us, in a spot where we're not left, we're not right, we're Americans. And we're going to pull together, and we're going to kick this thing's ass and come back stronger than ever. It's a team effort. It takes community spirit and uh, community involvement. It takes yep. the little things to, to help your neighbors out. Oh. It takes the little handwritten notes and the extra thoughts and uh, and connections in a different way. So um, just, yeah, this, that was very well said, Paul. <clears throat> a man of we're, we're such eloquent words. And we're more fortunate than others. So we're doing okay down here on the hill. Come visit us. How can people best support you to come visit and uh, can they do other things can they buy gift cards online merchandise things like that online on facebook they can buy gift cards on the shop page but okay the real way to do it is just to think about us when you're hungry when you're thirsty. want dinner when you're thirsty and you want a beer uh, and you're around the area we'll deliver it to you you don't have to and for people that are not around the area, you encourage them to come visit when uh, when the when, when the, when the coast is clear. <laughs> the, the the nice thing about this place is right now is that okay, you're not from the area, but you're in the area. It's it's Thursday afternoon. You want a pizza to go? You can pull up in here and get a six pack. Take a walk over by the horses. Have a beer. Get your pizza. Eat it while you watch the horses. You know, and just kick back, breathe deep. How late are you open today? Uh, we'll be closing around five. We'll be out of here. Cool. So you've got uh, you've got not too much time, but if you were in the area and you were thinking pizza sounded good, there's a maple drizzle promotion going on today. Uh, <clears throat> there's also a glass special going on. And if you come to visit them in Lyman, don't forget the apples and carrots for the horses because that's apparently a strong need right now. Uh, Paul and Abraham, thank you so much for being part of this virtual brewery tour. It's, it's been fantastic to hear from you guys and hear your point of view. Uh, for those of the new world. Isn't it though? I mean, you couldn't get this many people on a bus if you wanted to. How many people did you, right. did you tour to today? 
So right now I can see 26 people are watching right now, but over the course of the 35 minutes or so, it was uh, nearly 400 people last, last hour. Big ass bus to tote them around. Big ass bus, yeah. And uh, that's true. Uh, we'll look into doing that. But if you liked what you saw and heard today from Paul and Abraham of Funky Bo in Lyman, you can support the main brew bus, which is a brewery tour company, by uh, making a virtual tip. Uh, right on our homepage at themainbrewbus.com, you'll see a section for virtual brewery tours. You can select this time slot. This is the 4 o'clock time slot. And show that you really enjoyed this conversation by making a donation to the main brew bus. Uh, yeah, like many other... To donate into that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's themainbrewbus.com. And this is a you know a small way that we can generate income as a brewery tour company. We don't have delivery, takeout, or curbside options. And it'll be several months before we'll be able to bring our bus around to visit uh, our local partners that are making great craft beer, wine, and spirits. So this is a great way that you can support us at this time. Uh, we're going to continue to offer these free of charge, but the donation will go a long way towards uh, not only our, uh, our spirits, but also to show that these are hitting home and are being uh, helpful to you. Um, and as was mentioned, you can support Funky Bow in a variety of different ways, but most notably, if you see Funky Bow in your uh, grocer's cooler at uh, any of the fine uh, places that you're able to buy in retail, go ahead and pick it up. It's worth it. It's very good beer. So uh, again, Paul and Abraham, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Cheers. Another cheers to you. Thanks, Doc. Another cheers to you. Cheers. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Thank you, Don. 10-4.